I'd like to welcome everybody again to another uh, beautiful time dito sa ating uh, gems uh, from the Word. And I know that God has been so good to you. God has been so awesome and faithful to you. And I know that you have had a great time uh, upon or a good uh, uh, weekend. And I pray to God that He will always keep you safe, protected, especially from COVID-19, that all the people of Praise Revival Center and our Christian friends will find themselves hidden in the blood of Jesus, protected from this uh, plague. I know God is always able to deliver us. Praise God. Now, before I uh, deliver my message, let me just uh, announce to everybody that this Sunday is our Communion Sunday. So gather before your television, your gadgets, at uh, about 9 o'clock, wala tayong Saturday, and this will not, uh, will not appear sa YouTube until about uh, sometime in the afternoon of Sunday. Plus, <clears throat> Passover, April 1, uh, prepare yourselves for this uh, great moment to reflect on the Lord's uh, passion and the Lord's uh, sacrifices uh, for every one of us. So right now, I want to go to a very important subject that uh, concerns everyone. No, this is not uh, about prophecy, but this has to do with our personal walk with God, with our personal relationship with the Lord, not just individually, but also collectively as a body of believers. And uh, in the past year in the church, we have had moments of uh, experiencing this thing that uh, I'm about to uh, teach you. And I believe there will be more of uh, this outpouring that will happen upon us in the last days. So let me talk to you about experiencing revival in our lives. Experiencing revival in our lives. We know that uh, there will be a great outpouring of the Spirit of God as prophesied in Joel chapter 2, 28, 29, that God will pour out His Spirit upon all flesh. And something will happen, our children will prophesy, our young people will uh, uh, see vision, young men will see dream, dream, uh, will see dream, uh, will dream dreams rather. And the men servants and the maid servants of the Lord will all be used by Him. So there is a coming revival. We know that uh, there will be this outpouring because it is promised in the Bible and we are awaiting uh, for that great moment. Now, Sir Smith Wigglesworth prophesied that prior to the coming of the Lord, there, were, there will be a quick and swift move of God to uh, cause people to find the Lord. There will be a great revival that will happen that the miraculous will be seen even in the streets and uh, that is something that we are to uh, really long for and uh, we have to hope that God will pour out his spirit even in the time of pandemic nothing limits the spirit of God to move and revive us all the only person who cannot be revived by God are those people who are not desiring for revival but those people are, have closed themselves to the moving of the Spirit because they think this is the moving of the devil. But uh, revival is always something that amazes or amazes the thinking of people. So firstly, l let me talk to you about biblical, the biblical principle of revival. Let's look into the scriptures about uh, revival. Well, firstly... Revival is a biblical term. People in the Bible know what revival is all about. They are familiar with uh, revival. Revival. They understand what revival is all about. They know how to use the term whenever they come to God in prayer or as they are seeking the face of God. The word is something that is very familiar to the people of the Bible. The, the believers of uh, Jehovah God. So this is something that they understood very well. Now the term revival is not an invention of uh, modern Christianity. 
but it has been in the Bible for thousands of years. So if people in the Bible know what revival is all about, well, this uh, tells us that revival has been in the Bible since the history of the Bible, since uh, the time of uh, creation, in fact, since the time of uh, Adam and Eve, we can already see the principle of revival beginning way back in their lives and up to the book of Revelation is a running theme in the scriptures. So revival is something that everyone is familiar and we ought to be familiar with revival. And uh, this is something that we really have to look into. Now revival is a biblical truth, not only a biblical term, but this is a biblical truth that we see in the scriptures. We find several uh, references of revival in the Bible. And let me give you just four uh, right now. Psalm 80 verse 18. The psalmist says, Then we will not turn away from you. Revive us and we will call on your name. Psalm 85 verse 6. Will you not revive us again? That your people may what? Revi rejoice in you. Isaiah 57 verse 15. For this is what the high and lofty one says. He who lives forever, whose name is holy. I live in a high and lofty or high place or holy place. But also with him who is contrite and lowly in spirit. To what? Revive the spirit of the lowly and to revive the hearts of the contrite. And then Hosea 6 verse 2. After two days he will revive us. On the third day he will restore us that we may live in his presence. That is very important, that line that we may live in his presence. So at this point, let's talk about the meaning of revival. What is revival? Well, firstly, let's uh, talk about what revival is not. When you say revival, it does not refer to a long series of evangelistic campaigns or some protracted meetings in the church. You know, people call this revival. Oh, me revival services come this week and will go from Monday to uh, Friday. But they are saying we are having a special service. But it's not really revival. And yung mga mahabang series of evangelistic campaigns in one place, they used to call this revival. But that is not revival. In Hebrew, revival is a word that describes something that is about to die. But it bounces back to life again. So it is uh, something that is about to die, but that something bounces back again to life. A good picture is a person who has just drowned and he isn't conscious. So you took him out of the water, you try to resuscitate him, and then he finally gets revived. So that is revival. There is a life that is about to die, but before it ever dies, it gets revived. It gets resuscitated. The Spirit of God comes down and begins to quicken the life that is still there. And the life is restored back to life. Okay? So this is what is, uh, revival is all about. There is a life that is kind of dwindling uh, away. But you try to revive it. You, you, you try to bring uh, back the, the spirit of uh, that individual or that thing and that uh, person or that individual is quickened. There is the restoration of life. Remember Jesus said to one of the churches, I forgot the church, but he said uh, that uh, you are to strengthen what remains. Maybe the church of Smyrna or Sardis, it's either the two. Strengthen what remains. Ibig sabihin, let it have life again. Whatever is re remain remaining, let it have life again. So this is what the psalmist is longing for and asking the Psalm 20 
oh, I'm sorry, 80 and 85, they are crying out for revival. Will you not revive us again that your, me, that your people may re, uh, uh, rejoice in you? And so also with Isaiah and Hosea, they were praying for revival, looking for the presence of God to come down again, that we may live in his presence after two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will restore us so that we may live in his presence. That is very important to really look into. Now, as a nation, Israel wanted them to be quickened back to their relationship with God. That is what revival is all about. That is what the psalmist will long for, revive us. And it's not just revive me. It's always... Uh, Attached to plurality, revive us. Will you not revive us? Oh, come down and restore us again. It's a cry for the nation. Now, we can pray for individual revival. Yes, we need to be revived on the individual basis. But revival does not stop with you. That revival must go on to the people of God. So, therefore, our cry is revive us again. Revive your church. Revive Praise Revival Center. Revive this church. Revive this uh, uh, glorious uh, church, whatever is the name of the assembly. Revive us again so that we can experience your mighty presence again. That we will not be on our own. You know, maraming churches kailangan ng revival because they have gone back to... Uh, Parang uh, social club ang isang simbahan. Instead of just, uh, or instead of uh, longing for God, crying out for the service, parang social club lang. You come there for fellowship, get uh, to know this individual, have a time together, outing together, eating together, having fun together. No, those things are uh, important, it's a fellowship, but that is not what the church is all about. Sometimes we structure the church so much. Like a pastor can structure the service. Dapat 20 minutes lang ito, 10 minutes lang ito, 5 minutes lang ito. And therefore, they do not give time for the moving of the Spirit. We will talk about that, how important it is for us to give release to the Spirit and to give Him freedom to move. Now, let, let's move on and... Uh, Let's really try to know what revival is all about, okay? So revival, as I already mentioned from uh, Hosea, is what? The presence of God coming down to His people again. Uh, before I read uh, Habakkuk uh, chapter 3, uh, let me read Hosea 6, uh, 2 again. After two days, He will revive us. On the third day, He will restore us that what? we may live in His presence. So revival is the presence of God coming once again to His people. Now let's go to Habakkuk chapter 3 and let's see the prayer of Habakkuk and the response of God. Verse 2, Lord, I have heard of your fame. I stand in awe of your deeds, O Lord. Renew them in our day. In our time make them known in wrath Remember mercy. And then verse 3, God came from Timan, the Holy One from, the, from Mount Paran, Selah. His glory covered the heavens and His praise, what? Filled the earth. So I want you to focus your eyes on verse 2 again. Here is the prophet Habakkuk praying to God, saying, Lord, I have heard of your fame. I have heard of what you have done uh, in the past, those mighty miracles, and I stand in awe of all your deeds, O Jehovah God. But that was not uh, the thing that he craved for. He was not satisfied of, quote unquote, the history of God. He wants to experience God again, not just the history of God. So he cries out, Re renew them, Lord God, in our day. Restore them, revive them in our day, day. In our time, make them known. In wrath, remember mercy. So 
there is a cry for renewal of those things the Lord had done in the past. So what we see here is a revi is revival is a revival and restoration of relationship between God and man. You know, man always has a tendency to become weary and to be tired of uh, his own personal uh, life. Maraming tao na papagod sa buhay. We can say <coughs> physically, they get tired of uh, everything. Emotionally, they can be tired. But they can also be tired spiritually. They can be weary and tired of their walk with God. They become weary of serving the Lord, of coming to the services. Uh, na the dry up ang tawag natin dito. So, therefore, he needs God to come down and once again revive him or reveal himself to him. That's what we need, folks. That God will reveal his, himself to us again. Wag lang yung history. Like here in, in Praise Revival Center, I could remember the strong move of God in 2013, especially 2014 and up to 2015. Malalakas po ang move. It kind of dies down because that is the character of revival. It does not uh, uh, carry on for a long time. Somehow magsettle ang uh, revival just like the cloud of glory uh, before the Israelites will lift up and sometimes it will uh, come down to get the people organized, to get the people running their daily lives. But there will come a time that the cloud will lift up again. And that is what revival is all about. So God will come down, make himself known. He brings down his reality to his people again. And with this, his people will begin to know that he is indeed real. Because they will feel his strong presence once again. They will sense his uh, loving uh, goodness in their midst. They will feel his love. They will feel his power and his presence will be manifested strongly among them. So the power of God will become alive in them again and many lives renewed. Many of God's people are returning back to him. They are crying out for more of God. They are longing for God to come down in a mighty way. Now, consider that Habakkuk is petitioning for God to renew his fame and his awesomeness to them as a nation. He doesn't want God and his power just to be a thing of the past. Ayaw niya na, you know, that this should only be a memory or a history, as I've said. He wants his reality right smack in their midst once again. That God will come down, that God will show who he is again to the nation. So with us, this, this whole thing should also be in our hearts. We need to crave for the presence of God. And you know, the Holy Spirit has a lot to play in this regard. Most especially if he is bubbling up inside of us and the river of God is uh, mightily flowing out of our lives as Jesus spoke in John 7, 38 to 39 that whoever believes in Him uh, out of their innermost uh, being or uh, their belly will flow out what? Rivers of living water. It will be gushing out. Some of us, that river is no longer flowing. It got stuck up or somebody stopped up the, uh, the river so it's no longer flowing. What will cause you to enjoy is that flowing of the Spirit out of your life, in and out. You receive it from God and it goes out from you and touching the lives of people. That is what revival is all about. The Holy Spirit comes on you, revives you, and then He reopens the well that has been uh, stuck up or stopped up by the enemy for a long while. And it flo starts flowing again and touching people's lives. So this is the cry of this prophet. But I want you to notice the reply of God to Habakkuk. Is that God comes down. And this shows that 
he answered the prayer of uh, this prophet. Look at uh, verses 2 and 3 again. Lord, I have heard of your fame. I stand in awe of your deeds, O Lord. Renew them in our day, in our time. Make them known. In wrath, remember mercy. God came from where? The man, the Holy One from Mount Paran. His Selah, he, his glory covered the heavens and his praise filled the earth. So God comes down and answered the prayers of uh, this prophet. Now, listen carefully. God never turns away or turns down the prayer of those who desire for revival. He always comes whenever the people are really seriously crying out for revival. They are seeking the face of God. When you seek the face of God, you will find Him. And that finding is a principle of revival. You seek His face, and he, that word face in Hebrew can also mean presence. You seek the presence of God, and then He what? Comes down. He makes Himself real again. You find God again. He is alive once again. So the truth is, He wants his people to cry out for revival. He really wants uh, people to cry out for revival. Remember that this is his desire, and his desire is to revive his people. Let's go back to Isaiah 57, 15. For this is what the high and lofty one says. He who lives forever, his name is holy. I live in a high and what? Holy place but also with him who is contrite and lowly in spirit. For what reason? To revive the spirit of the lowly and to revive the hearts of the contrite. God says, I am the lofty God. I dwell up high, but I am not just there. I come down. I come down to be with people whose heart is contrite, and who has a lowly spirit inside. These are people who are humble. These are people who always look into their lives and say, Lord, if I have done something wrong, forgive me, cleanse me. You're always are looking for God to uh, cleanse your life. You're always a person who is open to be cleansed by the Lord. And then you're lowly, you're humble, you long for Him. You know what humility is in the Bible, to be honest? Humility is, yeah, you lower yourself. But basically the principle, because all of uh, the letters and the words of Hebrew, of the Hebrew language, they're all connected together. They're all related to one another, like a one big, big family. Every word is related. So when you say, humble yourself, it is always humble yourself before the Lord. It's always you humbling yourself in the midst of, uh, or, or be, before your Father in heaven, rather. So when you say, I will humble myself before this man, firstly, you're not humbling yourself to him, but primarily to God. You obey the word of God. So you humble yourself before God and said yes and then I will humble myself before this man. It's always like that. That is what humility is all about. So God is looking for such a people whose heart is lowly. And back to Habakkuk, I want you to consider that God came down in verse 3. God came down from where? From Timan. The Holy One from Mount Paran, Selah, His glory covered the heavens and His praise filled the earth. I want you to notice that God came down from a mountain. I want to talk about the principle of the mountain. I have a sermon about that many, many years ago that uh, God is always found on top of the mountain. Now, He came down from a mountain. Well, this shows that he is the lofty one. 
as we have read sa Isaiah 57 verse 15. God lives in a high and holy place. He is their way up high. Uh, 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 our God <clears throat> uh, resides on the top of uh, the mountain. And uh, that is what you also see with Moses uh, when he went to God. And where did he go to? Well, Mount Sinai, but God was there on top of the mountain. So that is the principle that if you want to be revived, go up to the mountain of God. Be willing to make sacrifices. Separate yourself from uh, the world, from people down below and be with God. But that's another sermon. Now, as I've said, he resides on the top. And Lucifer, the devil understood this very well when he used to be an angel. But later on, since pride had come into his life and he turned out to uh, be cursed by God. Well, he understood that uh, God dwelt on the outmost high of his mountain in heaven. As I've said, God resides on, this, uh, on his holy mountain. Isaiah 14, 13. Look at his rebellious words. I will sit enthroned on the mount of the assembly, on the outmost heights of the sacred mountain. What is that sacred mountain? That's a place where God is. That is where his temple is located. The mount of the assembly is the place where angels come to worship God. And people who are in heaven, they go to this mountain to worship God. And I believe once uh, our life has ended or the rapture happens and we are brought to the presence of God, we will be brought to this sacred mountain, to this holy mountain of God. So uh, he resides on the very heights of his sacred mountain but same as uh, we have seen in Isaiah 57, 15, that there are times that God will come down to us. He will come down to us below in response to a cry for revival. He will make himself real and known to those who are thirsty for him. Down below, God may be the God so high, but he comes down to people who are contrite and who are lowly in spirit. They long for God. So if you long for God, if you're hungry for God, if you thirst for God as a body, you long for God, God will come down to you. God will fill you up. Get out from the rituals of life. Get out from your traditional way of worshiping God. And let God just simply come down and show His power uh, to you, open yourself as God comes down from His sacred mountain down to us. But there's something I want you to notice here. God comes down from Mount Paran. Okay? Look at verse 3 again. First part says, God came from Teman or Timan, the Holy One from where? From Mount Paran, Selah. This is very interesting to look into. The question is, where is Mount Paran located? Where is this located? I tried to search it in the scriptures and found out that Ma Mount Paran is located in Arabia. Okay? It is located in Arabia. Now I got a question. Is there a holy mountain in Arabia? Is there a holy mountain in Arabia? The answer is yes, because the true Mount Sinai is not in Sinai Peninsula, but this is located where? In Saudi Arabia right now. <clears throat> it is proven. <clears throat> there are a lot of facts, a lot of uh, testimonies on the ground that will say this is the real Mount Sinai. So even Paul acknowledged this. Galatians uh, 4.25 Now, Hagar stands for what? Mount Sinai, where? In Arabia. So I would like to show you two pictures. 
This mountain is called Jabal al Los or Jabal or Jabal el Musa, the mountain of God or the mountain of Moses. So, where is this Mount Paran in Saudi Arabia? I believe God is talking or referring to Mount Sinai. Okay? He came from here. And you know, Habakkuk lived later on. See, Moses had seen the power of God. Moses was, uh, you know, had uh, been uh, a long, long time uh, in uh, this area when he brought the people of Israel out and he brought them to the holy mountain of God. So this is Mount Sinai. This is Mount Paran in uh, Arabia. So Habakkuk saw God coming down with all of his glory at the same mountain where, where he revealed himself to the people of Israel. I've heard of your fame in the past. Well, God came from the same place, okay? God came down powerfully. So he descended, uh, we know in the story of Exodus, he descended on top of Mount Sinai and filled the whole place with his glorious fire. Now, I want you to notice something, how God moved. Uh, I, I, if you know the geography or at least uh, yung mapa ng uh, Middle East, uh, I want you to notice that God firstly is mentioned he came from Timan. Where is Timan or Timan? Well, Timan is in, in Edom, the area of the king of Jordan right now, kingdom of Jordan right now. Okay, so if this is, okay, let me give you a picture. If this is Israel or the land of Israel, uh, Israel is here, Jerusalem is here. Uh, the other side is uh, what? The Jordan or the area of, uh, of Edom, of uh, Moab and Ammon. And uh, just go south of it. If you go south of it, that is already Saudi Arabia. So God came down from the south, Paran, and went to Timan and then crossed over to Israel. So... I love the picture, okay? God is always the God of revival. God is always the God of fire. That is what is being portrayed here. He had shown His glory again and came down to Israel where this prophet saw the glory of God coming down. And I believe once uh, we cry out to God, the revival of the past, I would say Mount Paran or Sinai, it will come to us again. We will experience the glory and the power of God. Anyone who's thirsty will see God coming down. He will walk to you. Okay? Nilam basana cross over and Lord. So he came from the south, went to Timan, and then crossed over to Israel, and most probably in the area of Jerusalem. So here is our Father. He will come to you. He will come to you and manifest himself that he is the great God. And the experiences of the past, the very same thing that uh, Habakkuk heard of God's glory, what he had done for the people of Israel way back in Sinai, God has come down from that exact place, the exact region, and he what came down to this prophet. So revival uh, can happen anytime we cry out. So I hope that this will be our heart. And don't just wait for revival. Cry out to God for revival. Let the power of God be there to touch you. You don't wait for revival. You long for revival. These are all principles that we find in the Bible. And I hope that uh, you have learned something. We will follow this track. And if you are a member of Praise Revival Center, long, mem long time member of uh, Praise Revival Center, you basically know some of these principles. But they will come afresh. They will come with a new touch. I long for revival right now. Prayer kuya na time sa Lord 
At kahit sa quarantine, revive us, God. Okay, come down, show yourself unto us. And I believe God will come down again before the rapture ever happens. So, we thank God for everything that we have learned. Can we give God a clap offering? Hallelujah. Praise God. And uh, let's go before Him in prayer again. Hallelujah. Mighty Father, Jehovah God, we just uh, are thankful for the word that we have received. Truly, Lord, you're the God who wants us to be revived. And I pray, Lord, that you will revive us. You will come down and show your power again. That we will live in your presence. That we will enjoy your power and your glory and your might. Abba, Father, we are here longing for that great revival that uh, people have been uh, waiting for since uh, the early parts of the last century, Lord. I pray that you will come down, revive your church, O God, especially at this pandemic, that we will not uh, yield, Lord God, to the power of darkness, but we will long for your presence to come down before you take us out of this world. We give you glory. We give you praise for everything that we have learned. In the name of Jesus Christ, hallelujah. Can I invite you to speak in tongues, everybody? Karabayashe, Arabaya Sandi Shikiria, Marabayashe Nia Sandi, O Rabayashe Karabayasa, Lea Shikarabaya Sandi, O Rabayashe Karabayashe, O Rabayashe Ayakan. May you feel people right now, God. May you touch their lives and cause their hearts to burn for you. May there be a great outpouring of the Spirit that will happen in them. Touch them, Lord. We thank you. Fill them with your presence. And all this, Lord God, I commit to you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, if you feel the Spirit of God, just allow the Spirit to move. Let Him touch you. Let Him fill you. Let Him saturate you. Let Him marinate you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So long for it. Even after this uh, uh, program is over, continue to talk to God. Praise the Lord. So I'd like to remind everybody, Communion Sunday is this coming Sunday at 9 o'clock. So gather everybody again. Let's have a great time uh, before the Lord. And I will do uh, some shout out. Uh, uh, Shout out again to everyone who will be there. I hope I can read your name uh, quickly. And uh, Passover will be April 1. And we are, are still kind of contemplating whether we will do it Facebook Live or, or we will do it uh, Zoom, okay? Just like what we did last Sunday doon po sa um, ating meeting or the other Sunday, don't post our thing, uh, General Assembly. Okay? So, I hope that uh, you will all be ready. And please be faithful with your tithes and offerings. Let the Lord be the one to continue to bless you. If you're faithful with uh, all this, the Lord will always be faithful to bless you in every way. Hallelujah. And these are the infos. If you cannot come down here to bring your offerings of how you can give uh to, uh, to uh, the church okay and some of you who are uh, our friends you can just give by uh, sending uh, your offerings uh, unto us not your tithes but offerings so Father God we just want to thank you for everything that uh, we have learned may you go with us to watch over us this week and uh, protect us again from harm and evil and this COVID-19 Thank you, God, for your power will accompany us and you will revive us. And I pray that you will bless everyone who, who is always eager to return uh, their offerings and their tithes to you. May you bless them like never before. Pour out your goodness upon them, O God. And I give you all the praises. I give you all the glory in the name of Jesus Christ. And may you go with us as uh, uh, we live our lives this week protect us from COVID-19. And may Jehovah bless you and keep you. May Jehovah make His face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. 
May Jehovah lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his shalom in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God. Thank you very much. The Lord's blessing be upon us all and shalom.